Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And Bruchim Hashibim, blessed are you who have returned. These words were spoken by the late Harvey Milk, San Francisco, San Francisco City Councilor, gay rights leader, and the mayor of Castro Street. All young people, okay, thank you. All young people, regardless of sexual orientation or identity, deserve a safe and supportive environment in which to achieve their full potential. Sometime in the mid-1980s, a friend of mine at the time remarked to me, I can't imagine anything worse for a parent than to learn that her or his son or daughter is gay or lesbian. I was younger, probably not as informed as I should have been. I had, and I still have, as do we all, some growing up to do. So I did not reply, and if memory serves, I, in short order, steer the conversation towards a different topic. But today, in 2022, and with a measure of added life experience, I know precisely how I would reply. Is learning that one's child is gay or lesbian worse than learning that she or he is insensitive and cruel to others? Is it worse than learning that she or he is a thief or a cheat? Is it worse than learning that she or he is a habitual liar? Is it worse than learning that she or he is ignorant or indifferent to the concerns of our world? Is it worse than learning that she or he is guided by the narrowest divisions? Or is it worse than learning that one's child has a debilitating or life-threatening medical condition? Is learning that one's son or daughter is gay, lesbian, transgendered, or bisexual worse than all of the above? Surely there are more legitimate and far-reaching causes for which a parent will endure disappointment and heartbreak. I may not have been able to articulate those in the mid-1980s, but I can, without reservation, do so today. My thoughts and feelings regarding both progressive and regressive attitudes towards the gay, lesbian, transgendered, and bisexual among us flow from what is at this moment unfolding within our neighboring land to the south. In the state of Florida, elected officials recently passed a bill that declares classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. Parents of such students, upon learning that this instruction has taken place, would be allowed to sue school districts over violations. While we should all support a parent's right, I should say obligation, to play a role in her or his child's education, let us not be misled. The Florida law is a barely disguised act of marginalization, and it can be interpreted as a step towards further exclusionary legislation of its kind. Last month, the governor of Texas issued a directive that would compel the state's family 
and protective services departments to investigate cases involving parents who provide transgender affirming care for their children. That is the treatment, medical and otherwise, that goes hand in hand with youth or adults who are undertaking the transgender journey. To paraphrase, according to this directive, parents who undertake to support their children during such affirmation will be subject to potential criminal charges of child abuse. Fortunately, a Texas judge has blocked the state from investigating reports of gender-affirming care for transgender children as abuse. The state of Texas, needless to point out, is appealing. The struggle for affirmation, once thought to lay at rest, begins again. The Texas Initiative, that is the equating of parental support for transgender information, affirmation with child abuse, is contrary to the professional opinion of nearly every medical major medical association in the United States. As in Florida, the Texas Initiative is a thinly cloaked attempt to ostracize transgendered persons and those who support them. And in all likelihood, a first step towards an escalating series of enactments of a similar nature. And since the beginning of this year, State lawmakers in at least seven other states have proposed laws that would limit the rights of transgender and non-binary youths, their opportunity to participate in sports, to receive gender-affirming care and counseling, and their use of restrooms. I'm greatly concerned and fearful of these government-sponsored schemes. I'm greatly concerned by these overt expressions of parochialism on the part of elected officials, not the least that this expression is unfolding in a country that for centuries has prided itself on serving to the rest of the world as a beacon of democracy and freedom of choice. I am greatly concerned by these moves to exclude and penalize what has by and large become an embraced aspect of human life. How are we to fathom these steps backward? How are we to explain proclamations unfolding in a country that has for so long represented the essence of liberal democracy? How are we to explain what can best be described as the unlearning of history? These initiatives are contrary not only to professional medical opinion, but to our Jewish understanding of chesed, kindness, kavod, respect, and shalom, integrity, not to overlook the cherished Jewish idea of B'Tselem Elohim, the understanding that every human being is created in the image of God. I'm greatly concerned, and I hope you are as well. For decades, to be gay, lesbian, transgendered, or bisexual, was illegal. To be revealed as such implied the dismantling of one's career and family life. Here in Toronto, police raids on gay-oriented businesses were common into the 1980s. The catastrophic AIDS crisis with which that decade is associated as well as resulting in the deaths of uncounted numbers of persons, 
ironically laid a path towards a larger degree of compassion for those whose emotional, intellectual, and physical orientation is towards those of the same sex. Yet we must remember the 1978 murder of San Francisco City Councilor, gay rights leader, and the mayor of Castro Street, Harvey Milk, the son of Lithuanian Jews, murdered because he was gay. We must remember the 1998 murder of 21-year-old Matthew Shepard in Laramie, Wyoming, murdered because he was gay. We must remember the horrific treatment of homosexuals in the Nazi death camps, as dramatized in Martin Sherman's groundbreaking play, Bent. And we must pay attention to the message of such award-winning dramas as The Normal Heart, Angels in America, and Azaz, within which the ordeal of persons besieged by both AIDS and public apathy is heartbreakingly documented. While serving my Jewish community in Tennessee, members of my congregation and I joined with our gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered friends and colleagues at City Hall to peacefully protest ordinances that denied health benefits for same-sex partners of municipal employees. As well, it was my privilege to visit the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered at their churches where I preached, talked, learned, and developed friendships across faith lines. So what it comes down to is this. Shall any legislative body presume to be the arbiter of loving relationships among the citizens for whom it serves as custodian? Shall the subject of loving relationships whether the same or opposite sex be deemed off limits to those that is our youth, destined for maturity and their roles as leaders and exemplars. Years after same-sex marriage has become the law of the land, officiation for which is undertaken with pride by my colleagues and I, shall the clock be turned back towards an era wherein one is compelled to conceal her or his true self? Shall the teaching and learning of generosity, understanding, and the spirit of B'Tselem Elohim be undermined? In the face of this oppressive legislation, may we not be silent. May we voice the dissent that such demoralizing initiatives deserve. We must not teach our youth to exclude, hide, nor to hate. Rather, let us at every opportunity teach them to be honest, kind, to recognize the worth of everyone whom they will meet. About bridges, not walls. About embracing, not repudiating. And let us teach them about love. Can you hear us on? May it be God's will.